Cito Gaston has used the same batting order for five games now, and the last team to do that in an ALCS was the 1984 Kansas City Royals. And Dave Stewart, who worked seven and two-thirds innings in the first game of the series, that was a season's record and his numbers, getting set to face Devon White, the switch-hitting center fielder. First pitch of the game, swing and a miss, strike one. White reached base three times against Stewart in that first game of the series. Walked twice, and he lines a base hit to sit right field. Ruben Sierra retrieves, so White is on base for the Blue Jays in the first inning. A look at the A's in the field behind Dave Stewart today. A couple of changes. Ricky Henderson is in left. Willie Wilson is back in center today with Ruben Sierra in right field and Jerry Brown will give Carney Lance for the day off. He'll play third base. Mike Bordick at short. Lance Blankenship the second baseman. Mark McGuire at first and Terry Steinbach behind the plate. Roberto Alomar the batter having a brilliant season and series as well. Devon White with the lead at first base and he bluffs going takes ball one Alomar hitting 412 7 for 17 has the most hits on this Blue Jay team two home runs and three RBIs and struck the big blow in the ninth inning yesterday that tied the game won by the Jays in 11. When Dave Henderson was healthy he was such a force in the number two spot. For Oakland because he provided power as well as average. Now Alomar, I think, has taken over that number two hole hitter is the best. He lifts a high pop foul down the left field line. Chasing it is Mike Bordick, and he makes a catch. And ta no, tagging up and then going back to first is Devon White. So Bordick was alert. He made a beauty yesterday to rob Dave Winfield of another at bat. You learn to get a good jump on the ball in Oakland if you're a, a middle infielder like Bordick because of the vast amount of foul territory and Devon White senses that he bluffs towards second and it took a rather miraculous throw by Bordick off balance to keep White from advancing. One away in the first inning and here is Joe Carter. The Blue Jays have hit seven home runs in this series. But none from their home run leader during the regular year, Carter, who hit 34. Stewart has to pay attention to Dwight, who had 37 stolen bases in 41 tries this season, a great percentage. But he's been nailed twice in stolen base attempts in this series. There is the menacing death stare, the trademark of Dave Stewart. One and zero, the count. Stu says the only player that can match that death stare is Dave Winfield. I'll take Stewart's. Yeah. <laughs> I think Dave's is a lot more piercing than Winfield's. Breaking ball misses and it's two balls and no strikes to Carter. There is Winfield, the other death stare master. <laughs> and he smiles. Back. See, he smiles too much. He's having a good time. Not that Stewart isn't, but on the day he pitches, you don't see much change in that expression. Death stare master. There could be a new name. <laughs> to match the paint master. A new exercise in looking down the barrel at the batter. Two balls and no strikes to Carter. We're in the top of the first inning. And a hard throw over there by Dave Stewart. It looked like Stewart got an extra warm up pitch in there the way he fired it over to Mark McGuire. People still buzzing over yesterday's fantastic game. A little unhappy here in Oakland as you might expect with the A's missing several opportunities to evening up this series. They had a six to one lead going into the eighth inning. And uh, Tony La Russa before the game telling us of the multitude of opportunities that the A's had to win it even earlier. And then uh, the great situation they had with a runner at third and one out and couldn't win it in the bottom of the night. But he said the Blue Jays are playing better ball than his club. And he's right. 
Carter swings and misses. And the count is two and two. It always falls on the shoulders of those short relief pitchers, but most of the time, as you mentioned with yesterday's game, you look back on it. Carter swings through the fastball on the outside edge. You look back at the opportunities early on that Oakland could have made that about a seven to one lead in the fourth inning. Tom Stottlemyre got some big outs. Well, back. In fact, that was the point that you just mentioned when Stottlemyre came in. When the A's could have really put it out of reach and they didn't and credit the Blue Jays for hanging in there trailing six to one and you know even in game one Toronto played well they have not played a bad ball game they've had some rough moments in the field in the first few innings yesterday but they have been at the top of their game two balls and two strikes to Carter with one out Devon White the base runner and he takes off the pitch is taken for a ball the throw to second base it's in time and Devon White has been thrown out stealing for the third time in the series. Blankenship covering, and there are two down and nobody on. Hit and run was on, and Devon White hesitates for a moment. See, he's looking in at Joe Carter to see if there's contact, and that's all it took, just that hesitation. Terry Steinbach again proving why he is one of the best. Only Yvonne Rodriguez of Texas and Sandy Alomar Jr. of Cleveland better at throwing out runners. Carter fouls off the 3-2 pitch, so he hangs in there. Joe with one run batted in thus far in the series. Pitch taken inside, ball four, and Carter is on. That is the first walk by Stewart, who walked three in his seven and two thirds stint in game number one. So we get stare to stare here, then, with Stewart and Winfield. <laughs> Winfield had good success in game number one against Stewart with a home run and a double. In fact, it was his double to right center field. That primed Tony LaRusa to take Stewart out of the ball game and bring in Jeff Russell. So here is Winfield, who's hitting 235, 4 for 17 on the series. Part of the base runner and the first pitch is inside ball one. Here are the umpires, Joe Brinkman behind the plate, Drew Coble at first, Don Dinkinger at second, Larry Young at third, and down the lines, Al Clark and Derwood Merrill. Biggest margin of victory in the series, two runs by the Jays in game number two and Toronto again, seven to five in game three. Two balls and no strikes to Winfield. You mentioned Stewart, said it's been a long time since I failed in this situation and I guarantee I'll do my job. See what he's asking right there to Joe Brinkman? Was that pitch up? Already questioning where the strike zone might be today. He thought that was in there. Winfield looking for a good pitch to hit, and the pitch is taken for a strike two and one. Yesterday, the A's were hoping to get five or six innings from Bob Welsh. They got seven plus, and you'd think that was a big bonus, but the bullpen failed Tony LaRusa. How much do they want out of Stewart today? The irony of this series has been that the A's starters have done the job. During the season, it was the bullpen that carried the load. Three balls and a strike to Winfield, and I would think today with the battered bullpen of Tony LaRusso's crew, not only Eckersley, but several of the other pitchers, that, uh, you know, if he gets uh, eight innings out of Stewart, that would be uh, a bonanza. None of their starters have given up more than three runs. Stewart, Moore, Darling, or Welch. There's a 3-1 pitch. Ball four. Wow. So Carter and now Winfield draw walks. A close pitch and Stewart must be thinking what do I have to do to get this ball over the plate obviously the way the Blue Jays have been swinging the bat you're not going to throw the ball right down the middle and Stewart for the second time during that bat saying you know where is the pitch questioning Joe Brinkman John Olaru who has been next to Alomar the most prolific Hitter for the Blue Jays in this series. Six for 16. There's a fastball for call strike one. Olerud was 0 for 2 in a walk when he faced Stewart back in the series opener Wednesday night. Carter the runner at second. Winfield at first. 
Two down here in the Blue Jays half of the first. Smacked out of play. And Stewart, who was behind the last two hitters, jumps in front of Olerud 0-2. And yeah, this is a, a hitter you do not want to fall behind because of all the Blue Jays hitters, John Olerud, the most disciplined and the best eyes at the plate. Offers it very few bad pitches. They're the runners with the count 0 and 2 and 2 down. Blue Jays looking to edge in front here in the top of the first inning of game five. Ball and two strikes to Olaru. Dave Stewart, who won this year a record 12 wins. He was 11 and 11 the year before, but his five victories in LCS play is a record. Two and two, and now Stewart seems to be nibbling with Olaru. He has thrown 21 pitches already. It's a characteristic of Dave Stewart. Those that have seen him pitch before, he will tend to struggle in the first couple of innings. He gets by those, a lot like Welch yesterday. He begins to cruise. Olerud fouls off a fastball up and in. Count remains two balls and two strikes. That's Carter at second base. Winfield the runner at first. They both walk. Strike three. So Olerud strikes out, and the Blue Jays lead two. So Toronto does not score, and Oakland coming to bat in the first. The A's batting order Ricky Henderson is in left field. Jerry Brown will be at third base as Carney Lansford gets a rest today. Ruben Sierra will be in right field, and Harold Baines, the DH. Mark McGuire at first base. Terry Steinbach behind the plate. Willie Wilson back starting in center field. Mike Bordick again the shortstop and Lance Blankenship who had a fine game at second base batting ninth for the A's and the Blue Jays you can stamp out that lineup every day Maldonado in left Devon White in center and Joe Carter over in right the infield Kelly Gruber the third baseman Manny Lee at short Roberto Alomar having a great series he's at second John Olerud at first and Pat Borders will catch David Cohn David Cohn a Four pitch pitcher, sometimes five, and probably as good a stuff as anyone in baseball. Outstanding fork ball or split finger fastball that he uses against the lefties, and a devastating slider that helped get him out of a lot of jams in game two. And he was masterful under pressure in game two with his team losing the first game of the series. When Mars loses, Cone comes out, and you can imagine the pressure, which he handled beautifully, working eight innings, giving up one run on five hits. Well, here's a fella. Ricky Henderson who did not give David Cohn much credit after the first game he said I'll get him next time well this is next time and Henderson who was fooled as many of the A's hitters were with some swings that normally you don't see off of the slider in particular will have his opportunity now against David Cohn Henderson started the series 0 for 6 but has four hits in a walk in his last nine trips to the plate and a breaking ball misses 1 and 0. That will be the key to open success today against David Cohn is to try to lay off that slider low and away. That's easy to say, a little tougher to do. Missed a good fastball by Cohn, and the count is 1 and 1, and it did not get lost on Cohn. Henderson's remarks. He mentioned to me in the dugout when we got out here, he says, I didn't forget what Henderson said, and he says, you know, they didn't see my entire arsenal. They didn't see a lot of the split finger or fork ball. And maybe he'll be throwing more of that today. One ball and one strike to Henderson. Two and one. That's the beauty of having those four or five pitches. Good break of ball, occasional change. Is that in that game, too, he did not have a good fork ball. And he may have one today and give Oakland an entirely different look. Five and three in his career with three days rest, but a good earned run average at 2.22. Balls behind Henderson, three and one. Anderson was 0 for 4 and struck out twice against Cone in the opening or the second game of the series. The big cut. Three and two now. It's a little gas right there. Your team's got a 3-1 lead in the series. And 
a little more relaxed out there. Even on short rest, that had some heat on it. Bone was four and three with the Blue Jays after winning 13 and losing seven with the Mets. And a fly ball to center field. Devon White in shallow center makes the catch. And there's one away right now. Let's check in with Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, Eric Fox admitted that he made a devastating mistake yesterday when he charged for home and was nailed at the plate with the game on the line. He told me this morning that Tony La Russa pulled him aside in the clubhouse and said he wasn't as furious with him today as he was last night. But Fox, a 29-year-old rookie, would love to redeem himself. Dick? And to his credit, Leslie, he stayed in there and answered all the questions, as did Dennis Eckersley after that crushing defeat yesterday. No hiding. Here is Jerry Brown. I think that's a good trait of most major league players today. They have learned to deal with the media and they don't run to the training room and hide, but they're there to, to answer. Jerry Brown takes ball one, dropped by the Indians and a big contributor for the A's this season. He started in center field yesterday, playing third base today. It's the part of the versatile aspects of this ball club. Fouls it out of play, one and one to Brown. And that play yesterday with Eric Fox on third was magnified because of the game, but realistically, with a man on third and one out, many managers put the contact play on. You've got a chopped up infield here. You force Roberto Alomar to make a good throw. I mean, if the throw's offline and he scored, they say, hey, nice going, aggressive base run. Two balls and one strike. One ball and two strikes. Looked outside, but Joe Brinkman said it nicked the corner, so the count is one and two. That's the beauty of baseball is that, you know, the clock doesn't run out. You can't run the ball and use up the clock, and everyone has their chances at the plate. You can look at many instances that make a difference. There's a base hit to right field as Jerry Brown just serves it up there to right field. So the A's have a base runner on Brown, single with one out here in the first inning. Oakland's best number two hitter this year, Jerry Brown. So if Henderson does not get on, Brown protecting the plate with two strikes does a good job of getting this ball to the outfield for a base hit, setting things up for Sierra and McGuire and Baines. Ruben Sierra, switch hitting right fielder. He has three extra base hits in this series, and his triple was smacked off of David Cohn in the ninth inning to lead off game number two when the Blue Jays were winning three to nothing and that brought the exit of Cone and Tom Henke came in for the first of his three saves so let's see how Cone deals with Sierra here the first pitch is ball one to him outfield is straight away for Ruben Sierra Took a home run cut there. One and one. Big swing against David Cohen, a hard thrower. Not a good matchup. Better shorten it up and try to make contact if you're going to hit this guy. You see the high leg kick. And the long swing. Brown had only three stolen bases during the regular year. Not a big lead. And there's a drive hit deep to right field. And this one is gone. A home run for Ruben Sierra. And the A's lead it two to nothing. Sierra has struck a home run with Jerry Brown aboard here in the first inning to give the A's a two to nothing lead over the Blue Jays and David Cohn. Well he did quicken it up and Ruben Sierra proving wanting to prove that he can perform in postseason play gives his Roberto Alomar impersonation as Robbie <laughs> did yesterday everybody's scoring touchdowns. <laughs> Six runs batted in now in the series for Sierra, who was acquired from the Rangers in the Canseco deal. David Cohn had given up just five runs in his last six starts, including 
his game two performance of the series but trailing here two to nothing and behind on the count to Harold Baines two and oh on the corner for a strike two balls and one strike one thing about this series it has been impossible to figure in advance Say both teams have the great bullpens, particularly Eckersley. And you can go right down the line to see where everything hasn't worked out the way the pundits said it would. Thought that those bullpen figures would be key in winning games, but not losing games. Last year's American League Championship Series, it was thought that Toronto's bullpen stronger than Minnesota's. Minnesota outpitched him. This year, Toronto has outpitched the Oakland bullpen. 2-2 pitch. Baines lifts it in the air to left center field and it's going to be Devon White and that's the second out let's see the pitching sequence to Sierra uh, here's the first pitch from David Cohn normally you you try to back Ruben Sierra off the plate and then get him outside you leave a fastball middle in as that one and that's where it ends up Usually you try to back him off the plate with the inside fastballs and then go outside. Cohn left that one inside. Here's Mark McGuire, who was hitless against Cohn, and a breaking ball is in there for a strike. McGuire, who has a home run and two runs batted in and has missed, just missed several other pitches from going out. Went around there for a strike. Oh, no balls and two strikes, but everyone talking about the perfect textbook sacrifice bunt he laid down in the ninth inning to move Fox to third to set up what the A's thought might be the winning run of the game. That's why even Tony La Russa in retrospect says no way we should lose that game. McGuire drops the bunt down and Steinbach their best clutch hitters at the plate. Two balls and two strikes and in talking with Dwayne Ward before the game he said when I tagged out McGuire I said thanks big guy he was happy he was bunting not hitting away trouble, and the 2 2 pitch full count now to McGuire this crowd and it is not a capacity crowd back from the looks of things in the upper stands in left and right field there are several empty sections or close to empty sections and we may have the smallest crowd of the three games here Ball four, the pitch is up, and McGuire draws the first walk by Cohn. They're so accustomed to division champions here, everyone anticipating their team being in the World Series, and that's why the crowds in the LCS have been less than capacity. Galen Sisko, the pitching coach of the Jays, out to the mound to settle down his right-hander. Reflect again yesterday on that on that game, Dick, where the key decision was Cito Gaston coming out to the mound. You mentioned Dwayne Ward. Gaston went to the mound and immediately said what do you want to do and without hesitation Ward said I want the hitter now a lot of managers in that situation if the pitcher hesitates he'd say let's walk the hitter they'd have walked Steinbach maybe even Lansford but Ward took that decision made it very easy for Cito he said I want this guy and he got him and it's a good thing he didn't hesitate when he said I want the hitter." you take a deep breath and a manager say oh a little indecision let's walk it so here's Steinbach Hitting 313 in the series. He has a home run and four RBIs and goes after a slider and misses for strike one. He struck out twice against Cohn in his previous appearance. In fact, Steinbach was one of the players that Tony LaRusso was referring to when he said, We took some swings we don't normally take. Yeah, usually with a man on third, one out, infield in, chance to win the game, you can bet the ranch on this guy. There's not a better clutch hitter. In their lineup, and there's another indication of why this may be Toronto's year. That's a good fastball to hit and fouls it off. Stewart threw 23 pitches in the top of the first inning, and Cohn has now thrown 27. Two to nothing to score, a two run homer by Ruben Sierra, his first playoff home run ever, giving the A's a lead here. McGuire, the runner at first base. And he's called out on strikes. On a fastball, and Steinbach has struck out for the third time in the series against David Cohn. But a two run homer by Ruben Sierra has given the A's a lead after one. 
two to nothing after one inning of play and when Ruben Sierra took the field he got this ovation from the fans he's been a favorite here right fielder that played out there before him always got a reaction to when he ran out there Jose Canseco Candy Maldonado in the second inning against Dave Stewart takes a call strike Maldonado struck out twice against Stewart's offerings in game number one Candy has a home run and three RBIs and it was game three where Maldonado did most of his damage. And it's fouled off the count 0 and 2. Sierra was traded for Jose Canseco had been a big favorite here maybe not so much in the clubhouse but certainly with the fans and counting 89 and 90 in the LCS Canseco had a combined total of only four RBIs and Ruben has six already in this one. He is playing with a passion since getting that Oakland uniform like I never saw in Texas running harder playing better in the field he's made a couple outstanding catches game one one and two the count to Maldonado in the air to center field and Wilson has room in right center glasses down and that's the first out in inning number two I nice to play with Wilbur Wood he could pitch every day play catch every day pitch back to back games and set major league history you ought to call Jim and uh, give him your suggestion no, to be I think Mr. Leland's game. very capable of making <laughs> his own <laughs> we uh, Wilbur of course started a double header one day but knuckleballers can do that Kelly Gruber who has had a terrific defensive series hitting only 125 but he has had a couple of clutch hits for the Blue Jays they have had contributions from everyone in the lineup at one time or another in the series Fouls off the one one deliver right nice play right behind the play bring your glove to the ballpark pays off is this where we were supposed to say sign him up <laughs> Or Rex Barney give that man a contract Rex Barney the former big league pitcher is now the public address announcer for the Baltimore Orioles here's the one two to Gruber and it evens the count Kelly Gruber with the cork well yesterday that got pretty smudged and it looked like he had been in some fierce battles by the end of that game here's the two two pitch and a fly ball foul down the line Henderson will chase it but it lands in the first row behind the A's bullpen Henderson aggravated a left knee in yesterday's game and they said they would take a long look at it afterwards but Barry Weinberg the trainer reported that everything is a OK for him. I think he'd have to be in very very bad condition not to play in this game with what's at stake. And with Cone on the mound, wants another shot at. Oh David. yeah, that's right. Ricky doesn't play today. They'll start. Hey, you got Coneitis, David Coneitis. <laughs> don't want to play. He doesn't want to hear that. One out in the Blue Jays second. The A's lead two to nothing. Two balls and two strikes to Gruber. On deck is Pat Borders. Drive to right field, but Sierra should handle this. He does. Two balls hit in the air where normally they hit it against Stewart. He doesn't get that many ground balls, and there are two down for Toronto. Pat Borders, the batter, four for 16. He has a home run, and he struck the blow off of Stewart. Owen won the count to Borders. He's trying to make the climb back from a 3 1 deficit. It's always a difficult thing to do but you've got to take that first step and just deal with one game break it into a three one game playoff you look at beating Cone Guzman and Morris a tough task that's depressing just take it today's game first count now two and one to borders managers that old cliche and everybody laughs at it day at a time it's the only <laughs> way you can take yeah, there you See, go I laughed at it. <laughs> it's but the only way you can look at this game but you know you're right Goes after an outside pitch and pops it up to the right side of the infield. Mark McGuire in short right field makes the catch. Three up, three down in the second for the Blue Jays. We're in the middle of the second inning, and the A's lead two to nothing. 
Two to nothing in favor of Oakland. Batting in the bottom of the second inning and the bottom third of the batting order facing David Cohn, Willie Wilson, Mike Bordick, and Lance Blankenship. Wilson, the old pro, played virtually his entire career with the Royals. He's had a good series. First pitch fouled off the fist, and Borders has a play. He makes this one. He dropped one earlier in the series for an error, but he handled that for out number one. And here's Mike Bordick. Bordick has only one hit in 13 times up in the series. But with his scrappy play in the infield, he's had to be a fixture for the A's in the series. And during the season, was their leading hitter, hitting an even 300. Count is 0 1. Made a great play. Yesterday in foul territory with Winfield at bat at a critical time of the ball game, banging off the scoreboard down there, or the billboard. And he runs up to bunt and takes strike two. And of course, he made a play not as spectacular to start this game. So he's a big play infielder for Tony Larusa. That's how he made the roster. Really, as a good fielding infielder, his hitting just came around this year. And one of the few durable A's this year. He played in more games than any other Oakland player. Fly ball hit to shallow right center field. Carter looks at Devon White, who makes the catch. And there are two down quickly here in the A's second inning. And in a season in where in which the disabled list was used 22 times by Tony LaRusso, it was good to have a Mike Bordick who played in as many as 154 games, where in the old days that would have been the entire season. You look at championship teams, and most of them have durable shortstops and good shortstops. Manny Lee's had a great year for Toronto. Two down to Lance Blankenship. Three for seven in this series. Done pretty well at the plate. Takes ball one. Blankenship started the series at second base. Then was out of the starting lineup when Walt Weiss was the shortstop and Bordick played second in games two and three and Blankenship has been back in there the past two days. And a hard shot handled beautifully by Gruber at third. He makes the play in a one two three inning. So David Cohn who threw 28 pitches in the first used only six here and after two innings it's still two to nothing. Fans enjoying an afternoon baseball for the third straight day. Beautiful weather. For these games here in the Bay Area and in the East Bay in particular, Dave Stewart has a 2 0 lead facing the number nine hitter Manuel Lee. Starting the third inning, Lee is switch hitter, fakes a bunt and takes ball one. Lee is three for 11 in the series. He had a base hit against Stewart in game number one. Line drive, foul ball into the crowd. The balance of that lineup, I think, is what's been responsible for so many of the Oakland relief pitchers getting touched up. You tended to think of Toronto as White, Alomar, and Carter in the past. Here's a guy like Manny Lee picking up big hits, Borders and Gruber near the bottom of the lineup. Lee with a big two run triple in game three. Big hits up and down the lineup. Fouls this back. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Surprisingly, Lee's problems have been in the field where he has committed three errors. And uh, after having a terrific year, and in fact, according to Pat Gillick, the Jays' general manager, the biggest surprise on the club this year. Here's the one-two pitch, and it's grounded to the right side of Blankenship. He'll handle it, and there's one down in the third. So much excitement in the games the last two days that this this seems like batting practice like we're down in Arizona or Florida yeah. somewhere for spring training. They're just getting loosened up warmed up. Your comment at the top of yesterday's game that hey we talked about pitching. Let's not forget the bats on both sides and wasn't that ever the case yesterday. 17 hits by the Blue Jays and 11 of them came from the eighth inning on. So here's Devon White, who singled to start the game up for the second time, looks at a Stewart curveball, and it's 1 0. White has been thrown out stealing three times in this series, which ties an LCS record. 
Devon was lost that only four times in the regular year, so this is an unusual turn of events for him. Two and zero, the count to White. Terry Steinbach's done his job to shut down that running game. And even a little toss out like that one in the first inning could save a run. That's on the corner. You know they talk about in different sports like a rejection from a center in basketball or a sack in football with throwing out a base dealer could have the same effect in baseball. Wow. Foul tips into Steinbach's glove and it's two and two. You may have seen Dave Stewart doing this a few times. You see him take the sign from Terry Steinbach and then there is a change in signal. Oftentimes the pitcher will wipe down once or twice that will change the location or the pitch. Stewart wanted that one. Brinkman didn't give it to him, and Dave has run the count full to White, three and two. Not happy at all with Joe Brinkman's strike zone. You see Steinbach's glove. He has to move it a little. Ah, that looked a bit below the knees. Here's the three two to White. Fly ball, foul territory again. Brown and Borda giving chase, and this will land. In foul territory, unplayable. A lot of room in foul territory here at the Oakland Coliseum. As much as any park in Major League Baseball. And a guy like Jerry Brown coming from Texas and Cleveland, immediately you, you have to pay attention to that because in most ballparks your reaction is, oh, that's in the seats, but not in Oakland. You have to get a jump and take off after all of them. Again, the 3-2 offering to White. That would have been ball four. And White knows it. Blue Jays, they can win. But win their first American League championship after losing their three previous trips to the LCS. And would exercise a lot of ghosts. They're one game away. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Fouled out of play. White making Stewart work here. Dave Stewart held a brief clubhouse meeting with his teammates yesterday. Very quiet, as you might expect after that tough loss. Said it's going seven games anyway. Let's just come out here tomorrow. The sun will be up. Tee it up about noon and let's go. And you got the right guy on the mound to do it. That self confidence can be ineffective. Again, fouled out of play. Almost a Joe Namath like prediction. He said, I'll, I'll win tomorrow. I'll guarantee I'll do the job. If you've seen him enough, don't bet against him. Talking to Tony LaRussa in his office before the game, he says, Frankly, we don't want to lose here. We don't want a blowout. And I think I'm going to tell the individuals to take it personally today. Not as a team, but individually. I'll go up to them, take it personally. Foul ball again out of play. and White has already looked at 10 pitches from Dave Stewart in this at bat. Probably trying to answer a little bit of Toronto's motivation yesterday as they took the so called taunting of Dennis Eckersley rather personally. 3 2 pitch and a fly ball hit to right center field. Ruben Sierra going back on the warning track. Out number two, but White gave it a long ride. So there are two down in the third inning and let's go back to yesterday's dramatic ninth inning after Devon White had been on third Roberto Alomar hit this tying home run to bring the Blue Jays back from a six to one deficit. They tied it and won it in the 11th and this after the A's had a golden chance to win it in the bottom of the ninth inning. So here is Alomar who fouled out to Bordick his first time up two down showed fun and takes ball one. They pitched him in, out, curve balls, high fast balls. Just as well roll it down and let him toss it up and hit it. That's a strike. He used to do that with Rico Carty. No need to get ahead of him. 0-2. He's going to hit it hard. You go down off the mound, say, here, Rico, toss it up and hit it. Hit it where you want to, and let's get it over. One ball and two strikes as Stewart spots it on the outside corner. Stewart seems to be in command of his pitches thus far. And a quicker tempo and rhythm than we're accustomed to seeing him. 
smash up the middle and a base hit for Alomar. You're never out of the woods with Roberto, no matter what the count is. And a two out single by Alomar, his eighth hit of the series. And the Jays have a runner on. Ball's got to look like a beach ball coming out of Dave Stewart's hands. Although that not a pitcher's pitch with a count of one ball and two strikes, you can see again it too much of the plate. Steinbach has to reach back toward the inner half. And when you're in a groove like Alomar, any slight mistake on the pitcher's part, he'll capitalize on. And always has a good time playing this game. As Cito Gaston, is the game for the game of baseball be easy for anyone? He says, I think that if it's easy for anyone, it is easy for Roberto Alomar. Wasn't easy for me, he said. <laughs> he said, I was always angry. Never had a smile on my face because the game was tough. Easy for a talented player like Robbie. Joe Carter walked his first time up. Breaking ball misses. 1-0. and In fact, Stewart walked both Carter and Winfield before striking out Olaru to end the first inning. Balls and no strikes. Well, Roberto Alomar has distinguished himself here in the series. He is only the fifth player now in Major League history to hit safely in each of his first 10 postseason games. And I have a hunch that won't be the last mark that Alomar puts on postseason baseball. Carter takes a big cut, fouls this into the crowd. I know that's a trade that helped both clubs with Tony Fernandez and Fred McGriff going to San Diego and they've got a great lineup but I when I watch Roberto Alomar play every day I still scratch my head and say how in the world could you trade a player of that talent at that critical position trade him away I don't care who you could get that's like the Red Sox and that rumored Clemens deal there's some no guys way, huh? you just don't trade and I would have thought he'd be one of them for San Diego guarantee you Toronto won't deal him away very quickly if ever. And they have the money to pay him. Two and one to Carter. Two down, a runner at first. Two to nothing A's. His Carter fouls back another. So it's two and two. If you're wondering who the other players were who hit safely in their first 10 postseason games, Gary Carter, Chris Chambliss, and Ryan Sandberg each. Hit safely as Alomar did in the first 10 postseason games, but the Bull, Greg Luzinski, holds the record 13 straight games in which he hit safely. With those uh, division winning teams with the Phillies back in the late 70s, I was privileged to be a part of those. Toronto has a chance to do what the Phillies and the Royals also accomplished. Close pitch, and they want to appeal to Drew Coble. Who says Carter held a swing. The Royals and the Phillies each failed in their first three tries after winning the division. Here's the pitch that they wanted for strike three, but clearly Carter held his swing. And both Kansas City and Philadelphia won on the fourth try. There goes Alomar, and the pitch is swung on, and it's hit out to shallow left field. Mike Bordick will call for it. And he's got it. There was a hit. And one left. It's still two to nothing A's and will return to Oakland Coliseum after this word from your local station. San Francisco in the background. We're at Oakland where the A's lead at two to nothing. And uh, we were talking about the taunting of uh, Dennis Eckersley and Tony La Russa before the game. That's right. That's yeah. taunting. Said what about other guys like uh, Roberto Alomar waving their arms. This is the taunting that a lot of the Blue Jays commented on yesterday. What's your view of it. Well the act puts an exclamation point on it and then for years nobody taught it and I can remember Willie Montanez always doing a little something on his home run trot and in the next at bat he had the league president's uh, autograph in his rib somewhere that was how that was dealt with but now it's it's sort of part of the game but more attention is focused on Eckersley when he does it than as for example Alomar when he hit the home run and raised his hands Ricky Henderson up for the second time against David Cohn. He fly to center his first time up. Count as one ball and one strike to Ricky. Two to nothing. The A's lead. Batting in the bottom of the third inning, looking to extend the series to at least a sixth game. He was way behind that heater by Cohn. 
you can't be a wide receiver in football these days without having your own personal dance can you I mean can you just go in the end zone drop the ball and go to the you have to have some kind of taunting exercise it's a little bit more of a part in baseball today not quite that flagrant like it is in football thank goodness breaking ball two and two to Henderson. Ricky reached base four times in yesterday's game. Reaches out and fouls it off. Trying to get a bead on David Cohn's slider, which has been the most effective pitch against him. You can see what the right hand hitters are trying to do, and Ricky having a little chat with himself with two strikes, just try to serve it out to right field, as he did on that foul ball. Anderson, Brown, and Sierra, the top of the order here in the third inning. And that runs the count full. Another beautiful afternoon here in Oakland. Not quite as warm as it was the two previous days. But it's shirt sleeve weather all the way. 3 2 pitch, ball four. Cole wanted that one, and Henderson draws a walk. That is the second base on balls issued. By David Cohn, so the leadoff man is on for the first time today for the A's, and Henderson is a threat to run, and the Athletics could play hit and run if they'd like. They lead a two to nothing. Man who can handle the bat is Jerry Brown. He led the American League in sacrifice bunts this year. Advantage for Oakland here. He doesn't have to bunt till Ricky gets to second because he can steal second. Cohn very easy to run against. Brown served a single to right field his first time up. Anderson has two stolen bases and two tries in the series. Ace trying to enter their two to nothing advantage. That's a fastball away, one and oh. See, the ideal number two hitter is a hitter like Alomar. Who can bunt, put the bat on the ball, and provide power? Brown does not provide the power very often, but he does have that discipline. You'll see him take a pitch or two and allow Ricky to steal if he chooses. In his postseason career, Henderson has been successful on 22 of 25 tries. Borders out to the mound. Probably saying, hey, he's going to run and he's going to steal anyway. Don't worry about him. If with your stuff, if we get three hitters out, we won't worry about it. But all the focus directed toward Ricky end up making a bad pitch to Brown. Cohn said he before the series started, he was going to try to work faster to the hitters and had studied videotape a lot of Todd Stottlemyre, similar styles. So the purpose of having a speedster like Henderson on base is to upset the pitcher and he's had an effect already. One ball and no strikes to Jerry Brown. Widening the lead is Henderson. He does not go and the pitch is taken for ball two as Borders was primed to throw the ball. It was the scoreboard said it's a strike. Joe Brinkman has a rather delayed strike call, and that's what it might have been. It appeared to be called ball two, and I think a delayed strike. So it's one and one to Brown. And there was the pitch out, snap throw to first, but Henderson gets back. Opponents have stolen more bases on David Cohn this year than on any other major league pitcher. So Cone coming in aware that if he lets those front batters on base, he's going to have to deal with it. And right now he's right in the middle of that situation. He's behind two and one to Brown. Anderson is a threat going over and almost out on that play. That was very close at first. Just a little quicker tag. You can see Ricky Bluff right there in the. So Ricky Henderson has rattled David Cohn here in the third inning. 
And there a charge to Cone, and the A's have a runner at third and nobody out. The late Woody Hayes theory, just like the forward pass, three things happen, two of them are bad. When you throw to first base, you pick them off, you balk, or you throw it away. You don't often pick a runner off, especially like Ricky Henderson. Now, you give the A's a triple by paying all that attention to. That's the disruptive factor. Guys like Henderson. Six errors committed by the Blue Jays in this series. Runner at third base, and Toronto brings the infield in with the count two and one to Jerry Brown. And there's a base hit. Henderson scores, and it's three to nothing, Oakland. Jerry Brown is two for two on the day in his first RBI of postseason. And Ruben Sierra coming up to hit, and here's what he did last time. See, that first pitch was outside, and that one wasn't. Sierra with six runs batted in in a series. Takes a breaking ball for a strike, low and one. Still nobody out. Henderson walked, and after several throws over, including one that nearly nicked Ricky, a throwing error by David Cohn. Henderson went to third, and Jerry Brown promptly knocked him in with a base hit. And the A's lead it three to nothing. After a crushing defeat yesterday afternoon, coming back quickly to play a noon game Pacific time the next day. Not easy for any club. And not easy for Oakland after the kind of defeat that they suffered. And the key word was quickly. Anytime you come after uh, out after a loss like yesterday in a game of this importance, if you could get the early lead, that sets the tone. If Toronto would have come out today and got a quick couple of quick runs, you can imagine how depressed they would have been in that dugout but now with this early lead coming out quickly that gives that team a lot of hope so Brown is on at first base no balls and two strikes to Sierra well, they got to be clapping on the Oakland bench they throw over there some more every time David Cohn throws over there it only hope it only helps that team it's taking away from his concentration toward home Moving to second is Brown. Let's see if it's a wild pitch or off the glove of Borders. In any event, Jerry Brown has moved into scoring position and still nobody out. And Cito Gaston will come out to the mound. There's been no activity in the Toronto bullpen. Again, the ball gets away from Cohen, a ball that Borders should have caught. I don't know whether he misread the sign, but it was right there. Pat just closed the ball too quickly. You're right. Pass ball has been charged to Borders. I knew managers in this situation would walk out to a pitcher of David Cohn's talent with that kind of stuff. He could strike out the side on nine pitches, right? Just say, pitch like there's no one on base. Don't worry about who's on base. If they steal a couple, they're not going to steal home. We mentioned the bullpen is quiet. Cito just trying to settle down his pitcher. And one of the great things about Cito Gaston, when people were talking about how Toronto chokes in the big games and big series and how they don't win the games they should win and even now he doesn't change his temperament he's a steady Eddie all the way and you see probably a chance to give a few words to Joe Brinkman on this visit also there have been several questions of the balls and strikes and Cito got a chance to get a word in with Joe and a few stares as well there's another The count to Ruben Sierra is one ball and two strikes, and the A's leading three to nothing have another runner in scoring position. Lee trying to sneak behind Brown to keep him close. Two balls and two strikes. There's Lee and the A's, Jerry Brown at second. Fly ball hit. 
headed to center field. Jerry Brown goes back to the bag. He's going to tag up. Here is White. And here comes the throw. And it's a good throw, but it's offline. And Brown moves to third on the fly ball. And there's one out. That was a big tag up by Brown because a fly ball could bring home another Oakland run now. Devon White gets in good position to make the strong throw, but with Jerry Brown's speed, no chance to get him. A productive out for Ruben Sierra, getting Brown the third with just one down and forcing Toronto to bring the infield in. And as we learned yesterday, and as Tony LaRusso mentioned to us too before the game, he says, you know, you never get enough runs. And there were many instances that we could have really blown open the game. And of course, 3 0 is not a big lead, as we have seen. And so the A's, I don't think. Will ever be satisfied with any kind of advantage. Today. They found out yesterday 6 1 was not a big enough lead, so they're going to try to tack on some more here. Here's Baines with the infield in. He's 0 for 1. And he hits a foul fly. Chasing it is Gruber, but it's out of play. What happens in situations like this, you talk about tacking on runs, and it's not that big league ball players don't try, but if you open up a, a 6 to 7 to 1 lead early, first three innings, it takes a little of the interest. Players back on their heels, it, the concentration not quite as sharp, and that's why managers key in on, on opening up the leads, like Larusa talked about yesterday, not allowing a team that margin where they can get back into it at three runs. Low one ball and one strike. In fact, yesterday in that five run inning for the A's in the third inning, when they batted around Mike Bordick. Who started it all with a single ended up by hitting into an inning ending double play with the bases loaded. So there was another opportunity for the A's to cash in. Two and one now. And now it's a strike. One ball and two strikes. You got to do you got a slow dance to Joe Brinkman. You can't jitterbug because he's got that one two. I mean he'll give you a very deliberate strike call as he did there. And a pop foul. That will now go out of play as well. Mark McGuire is on deck for the A's. Sizing up Cone in the on deck circle. This has been a standard operating procedure for the A's slugger in this series. Got a good fastball to hit, and Baines just missed it as he fouled it back. That is not uh, Mark McGuire. <laughs> he did not go from the on deck circle into the upper deck with a glove to say hello to the fans. Well, he's, got is, some, he's got some brothers that big. Maybe that fellow wants to pinch hit. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. <laughs> two and two. It appears again in today's game that David Cohn is without that good fork ball. He is a right hand pitcher that has amazing success against lefties because of the fork ball and with four of them in the lineup today for Oakland. He has not been able to put them away Brown Sierra Baines. And he strikes out. It was foul tipped into borders glove and Baines went after a high fastball. So. He misses the chances to get a run home there and strikes out for out number two. Just outs right here as he gets it on the high fastball that keep David Cohn and the Blue Jays in the game. Opportunities like this that Oakland squandered yesterday, even though the heat was on Eckersley. It's innings like this that cost him a chance to put it away. We'll see if Jerry Brown's alert play to go to third after the fly ball is wasted here. Mark McGuire, who walked his first time up, takes strike one. So now it'll take a base hit or an error or a wild pitcher pass ball to get Jerry Brown home. One run already in for the A's here in the bottom of the third inning. They lead the Blue Jays three to nothing. And off the glove of Borders, but Brown at third did not have much of a lead, and he wasn't ready to run. If he had been going, he would have he could have scored easily. Leslie uh, did a little thing on Pat Borders glove. That's a favor to his. Yeah, I think he might want to trade that thing. He's had a little trouble catching the ball in that old glove. That's been a favorite. That's two of them now that have gotten away. May need a new one.
One and one. Two balls and a strike to McGuire, who went 0 for 4 the first time he faced David Cohn in game two. 29 year old native of Kansas City trying to shut down the A's here. And that's a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Cohn acquired from the Mets at the end of August. At five shutouts this year, four of them in the first two months of the year. Full count, three and two. Talking about all the young outfielders that Toronto has traded away. There's another one, Ryan Thompson, to get David Cohn. And Jeff Kent, the infielder. And David Cohn bears down and strikes out Baines and McGuire with a runner at third. And the A's see another chance go down the drain. They get a run, and after three, they lead it three to nothing. Ruben Sierra's two run homer in the first gave the A's the lead. If you're keeping track of Dave Stewart's pitches, he's at 62. It's allowed only two hits, and Jerry Brown made it three to nothing with a single in the third inning, but he was stranded at third as Cohn struck out Baines and McGuire to end that threat. So the totals after three 3 3 and 0 oh for Oakland, 0 oh 2 and 1 for Toronto. The run was unearned, by the way, in the third inning. And as we move to the fourth, it'll be Winfield, Olerud, and Maldonado against Dave Stewart. Winfield drew a walk. His first time up. Ball one. Stewart has had 11 starts since elbow problems put him on the disabled list. In fact, he really had an injury free career until the past two years, and he has been on the DL twice in the past two seasons. Two balls and no strikes. In fact, Bob Welsh, who did a tremendous job, and a lot of people forgot about how well he pitched to get the A's into the eighth inning yesterday, was on the disabled list three times, and he really gave Tony La Russa more than he even could have imagined. But no one was talking about it after the game with all the dramatics in the late inning. There's a strike, two and one to Winfield. That has been the big change in postseason play because... During the regular season, Oakland got less than 50% quality starts out of guys like Welch. They had to turn it over to the bullpen from the sixth inning on. Not so postseason play. All four guys that have gone to the mound have done a, a job, pitched well enough to win. Miss with a fastball, and the count is three balls and one strike. They're getting tired of looking in. Now they're just going right to work. There was another one about Bell Tide. Stu looked in and said, Where was that pitch? A shrinking strike zone today so far compared to yesterday. You must have loved those. And a drive hit deep to left center field, way back, and Dave Winfield has his second home run of the series. And his second home run off of Dave Stewart. And the Blue Jays now trail by a score of three to one for Winfield, his third RBI of the series. And he cracked that one out of here. Another one of his famous two iron shots. Recall the pattern of Dave Stewart, most of the pitches inside. Once you get it out here, where Winfield can get those arms extended, I mean, that comes off that bat like a two iron. Look at the leverage. Freddie Couples would be proud of that swing. <laughs> Look at the leverage right there. And that's why you see the pitching pattern inside against Winfield. John Olerud smacks one past the first base coach Bob Miller. Dave Winfield, who was acquired along with the veterans Jack Morris, David Cohn, late in August for one purpose: get the Blue Jays into the World Series for the first time. That's a strike. 0 oh and 2 now to Olerud has. Been a little quiet at the plate since game number one, but has struck a big home run here to give Toronto their first run. Still 0-2. He's quiet even when he's noisy. Such a 
quiet young man. You talk about Winfield's presence and over in the National League, Sid Bream and Terry Pendleton as free agents have meant so much to that Atlanta team. That's unusual for guys coming over as free agents. And the same can be said of Dave Winfield and Jack Morris for Toronto. Fastball on the inside corner, and Olerud goes down for the second time, this time looking, and there's one out. Let's take a look at the way Stewart pitched to Winfield inside. Doesn't want to get it over the plate. Another one inside. Now it's 2 and 0. Oh. Sticks it on the. Oh, that came inside, caught the corner. That's the one he thought was a strike. Didn't get it. Here's the 3 1 shot. And out over the plate. Mm. Candy Maldonado 0 for 1. 0 and 1 the count to Maldonado. Who. Uh, was not pleased with that call by Joe Brinkman. He kind of widened the strike zone there. There's a stare for you. That's Devon White having a few words for Joe Brinkman. No balls in one strike. Popped up to shallow right field. Blankenship is out. He'll call for it. And that's the second out. Talking about that clubhouse leadership, that would be a surprise to players in Minnesota because Jack Morris has been a great pitcher, never known as a leader. But I liken that to Keith Hernandez when he was captain of the Mets. When he was in St. Louis, he was one of the team. We had veterans like Bruce Suter and Gene Tennis. He was not what you'd call a leader, just a good ball player. Now he goes to the Mets and he becomes a leader. And that's what Morris has done to the Toronto pitching staff that he didn't do to Minnesota last year. Kelly Gruber on the first pitch pops it up foul territory Steinbach and Brown it's Brown and that will retire the side but a leadoff home run by Dave Winfield and now the A's lead has been cut to three to one for these three games here at the Oakland Coliseum and a great sky for the blimp to be up there and we're enjoying these great shots thanks to the Bud one airship. You can't find a cloud up there. I've been looking four days. I haven't <laughs> seen one. Outfielders wish there were a few. <laughs> I guess. Terry Steinbach takes a ball one to lead off the fourth inning. Steinbach took a called third strike his first time up. Popped up and a play. Now. The Blue Jays, Gruber lost it, and Manny Lee makes the catch in fair territory for out number one. Right now, here's Leslie Bissell. Dick, I'm here with a man who's enjoying a great series and a perfect day, Dr. Bobby Brown from the American League. Dr. Brown, first of all, much has been made about Eckersley taunting the Blue Jays. Should baseball have some kind of policy? Oh, I don't think so, Leslie. I think that uh, what goes on in the field is, is up to the players. and. Some players react differently to different situations and they usually get some type of an appropriate response and that's just part of baseball. On another topic what will it mean to the American League should the Giants leave the Bay Area you're left with the fifth largest market in America all to yourself. Well, Again we've uh, when you look at the map uh, I'm not sure that the Giants are leaving but if they go to Florida uh, you have to look at the fact that the, the, the southeastern United States is really National League and. Northern California will be American League and whether that's a trade off I don't know. Do you think now cities have to take the threat seriously you know a team hasn't moved in 20 years. Well again I don't think teams should try to make threats I think that uh, the Giants here were uh, essentially uh, trying to get a new ballpark because they didn't feel that they were doing well enough in the one that they were in and I think they felt frustrated after trying for so long and perhaps that is what precipitated Mr. Lurie to want to sell the team. Thank you Dr. Brown. Back to you Dick. All right Leslie thank you very much. A couple of questions for the American League president uh, that may be on the minds of some baseball fans both looking at the big picture and yesterday's game with the taunting situation and he was a former player so I understand exactly him saying leave it leave it to the players. I wish things like the brushback rule but the same thing would happen. They would let the players police that instead of the league office and there'd be a lot less running to the mound and being brawls. Mike Bordick hits a high pop up. Wilson, you saw, bounce out to Alomar, and Alomar makes the catch in foul territory. So David Cohn retires the A's in order here in the fourth inning. Pat 
Borders takes strike one to start the fifth inning. Borders popped out his first time up. Dave Stewart has allowed one run on three hits. He has walked two and also struck out a pair. There's a strike, and it's 0-2 now to Borders. Good velocity by Stu. His last start before postseason play against Milwaukee, he said he felt the best he had all year, and that's why Oakland felt very good about using Stewart to start game one. Chop to second base, Blankenship with the toss, one out. One of the rare times in history that teams with identical regular season records are meeting in postseason. It's never happened in the LCS. It's happened a few times in the World Series, but not many. Here's Manuel Lee. There's a breaking ball in for a strike. We mentioned that uh, most of the outs against Stewart are fly balls. He has retired. Two batters on ground balls, Borders on that last out, and Manny Lee, who's 0 for 1. Swings at a pitch out of the strike zone, and the count is two strikes. And this is more like the Dave Stewart. Yeah, he's got a few backers in the stands getting close to that date. Was he in the debates yeah, last night? I don't know. There's a couple names missing from that ballot, I think, but Bay Area <laughs> fans want to vote for him. Again, in the early innings, he'll fall behind hitters, struggle a little bit. Now, in the fifth, you see a lot more 0 2 1 2 counts, much better command of his pitches. One ball and two strikes to Manuel Lee, who had to fight off the efforts of a phenom, Eddie Zosky, in spring training to win the shortstop job, and has gone on to have his best season, both at the plate, particularly in the field. Big part of the Blue Jays' success this year. Two and two to count to Lee, and they're really solid up the middle where he's supposed to be with Borders as a catcher, Alomar and Lee at second and short, and Devon White, who's about as good as you can get in center field. Still two and two. It's that old baseball adage strong up the middle, and you look at most of the teams that are contenders or win championships, and you'll usually see, oh, like the Pirates with Lavalier and Bell and Lean and Van Slyke and the Braves with. Olsen was healthy. Now Barry Hill doing a good job also. They're strong up the middle. Breaking ball and it's bounded down to first base where Mark McGuire steps on the bag and there are two down. Two ground ball outs here in the fifth inning. Well, uh, two good fans here today and Bella on the left is having a great time of it. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, the fans that come to the games here at Oakland dress up with more like costumes and the pins and the different paraphernalia we see in the stands, I think, than any other ballpark. Three of the tickets that you gave away to fans yesterday yes. they were dressed like they came <laughs> right out of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> you picked up on that. <laughs> huh? Good seats too, huh? <laughs> Third deck down the right field line. Devon White lines one down the right field line, and it should be extra bases. Sierra retrieving, and White going into second base with a stand-up double. He has been a very tough out for Dave Stewart. He had a single and two walks in the first game of the series, and is now two for three with an extra base hit with two down here in the fifth. And at a perfect time, even with two down, it gives Roberto Alomar, the Jays' hottest hitter, a chance to come to the plate. Excellent fastball hitter from the left side of the plate. And I think both his hits were off that pitch. Alomar singled his last time. The A's at one point led three to nothing, but the Blue Jays scored a run in the fourth inning. And with two down, have a runner in scoring position here in the fifth. Alomar slaps it out of play. Nothing new for Roberto Alomar to do well in postseason. Last year, he hit 474 and knocked in four runs in a losing cause against the Twins. Talk to managers around the American League, and when you ask them to size up the Blue Jays, usually they'll start by saying their best all around player with great baseball instincts and intelligence, Roberto Alomar. 
And he has hit Dave Stewart pretty well as we had mentioned. Six for 14 against Stewart. That one missed. One and one to Roberto. Stewart making his second start here in the LCS. There's a strike. One ball, two strikes. See what Alomar does now in a defensive posture with a count one and two. He's got Devon White in scoring position at second. Stewart had set down the first two batters here in the fifth inning. Protecting the plate and a fine defensive swing on a breaking ball low and inside stays alive. Most of the good hitters and especially good hitters who are in a hot streak like Alomar, they have the ability to take the pitcher's pitches like he did there and just nick them, foul them off, and then you make the slightest mistake, bingo. Important batter for Roberto Alomar in this game. For Dave Stewart, he slaps it to the left side. Backhanded by Bordick. The throw to first in time. Outstanding play by Mike Bordick, who snuffs out a Toronto threat. Watch the way Bordick plants the foot. Plants the foot to get the ball there in a hurry. Great play. Mike Bordick seated next to Walt Weiss, whose shortstop job he has taken during the championship series. Great play in the field despite not uh, hitting like he did during the regular season. Lance Blankenship taking a breaking ball for a strike. A's batting in the bottom of the fifth inning, leading three to one. David Cohn, who was the winning pitcher in game two with a gutty performance. And that's through the legs of Kelly Gruber rounding first is Blankenship. They're going to wave him into second base and he's going to be in there in what should be charged an error to Kelly Gruber. That ball was hit right at him. He has had an outstanding series defensively, but that one he appeared to mishandle. We'll wait for the official scoring. About the first one that Gruber has missed that he's been able to get leather on caught in between there third baseman the first instinct is to backhand it and you see the lateral movement he said no I can get it with the palms up it squirts off the heel and with Blankenship speed gets to second easily Kelly Gruber's error and Blankenship is on at second nobody out and Ricky Henderson trying to solve the Deliveries of David Cohn looks at the first pitch ball one Henderson has flied out and walked At the knees but low right. two balls and no strikes and that pitch appeared to be <laughs> strike zones like right that. in the zone. It's a, it's a holiday today. The banks are closed, so is the strike zone. I think in Canada as well as here. I mean, it is the smallest that we've seen in the championship series. No mail delivery either. No. Two and zero oh to Ricky Henderson. Got a pitch in on the fist, fouled away. Two and one. And today is a holiday, but Thanksgiving Day in Canada mm -hmm. and. That's why with David Cohn pitching for the team from Canada, the strike zone's closed. Of course, Dave Stewart saying, how about me? It's closed for me, too. <laughs> Here's David Cohn, who was not even a member of the Toronto Blue Jays till the last week of August, has a chance to pitch the Jays into their first World Series. Trailing here, 3-1. to one. He gave up only one run in eight innings in his first outing, and there's a button and a beauty. Henderson is going to beat it out. Going to third is Blankenship. Runners at first and third. And nobody out. 
Kelly Gruber held his ground. It was David Cohn's responsibility to cover the line, but you see him falling off to first. And by the time he gets there, just eat it. Nothing to do with it. Watch Gruber. Hey, Gruber playing deep right there. He's going back to the bag. No chance for Cohn. Well timed and perfectly placed bunt. Three to one the score and the A's with runners at the corners and nobody out. And Jerry Brown, who has two hits and two trips and an RBI against Cohn. Chance for the A's to add to their two run lead. Hits are four apiece in this game, and the bullpen activity starts for Toronto as Cohn very nearly throws this one away. Ball one to Brown. And there is Jimmy Key, who has been up several times in this series, but has yet to make his first appearance. A starter in the rotation all year, in fact, won five games in the final month of the year and then relegated to the bullpen. Brother, first base, Henderson wandering off, gets back. No wavering in Cito Gaston's approach. And you mentioned Jimmy Key's numbers. They were committed to Morris and Cohn with three days rest. I thought with the 3-1 lead, they'd be tempted to say, let's push him back a day and start Jimmy Key. And there goes Henderson, and the line drive, base hit. Henderson will go to third. Blanket chip will score. The throw to third base, not in time. The ball is thrown away. Henderson will come in and score another run and headed for third base is Brown and he's in there five to one in favor of the A's his favorite one two combination at the top of the lineup and are they delivering they said we're just waiting for Ricky to join the group join the party and he has created some runs today throw off line Cone not backing up third with all the territory Henderson scores easily and nobody covering third so Jerry Brown gets over there with still no out and the pitch to Ruben Sierra is ball one it is a single and an RBI for Jerry Brown. So he's three for three and has knocked in two runs. Ricky Henderson scored the run on an error charge to Joe Carter on the throw from right field. So two errors this inning for the Blue Jays. Brown has really made his presence felt this afternoon. And Sierra, who has a two run homer back in the first inning, at the plate in the count. One ball and one strike five to one in favor of the A's and if you ask them they've seen this picture before Yeah, they know what the score was yesterday. I think they're going to be a little more intent on picking up that extra run or two today. Jerry Brown at third. Still nobody out. The infield is in and a base hit. Through the drawn in infield up the middle, scoring is Brown, and rounding first is Sierra going halfway. And it is now six to one as Sierra knocks in his third run of the game. And the third run of this fifth inning. And that'll be all for David Cohn, who gets knocked out of the box here in the fifth inning. So it wasn't to be for David Cohn today after his sizzling performance in game two. The A's lead at six to one and we'll be back. It is six to one. Still nobody out. David Cohn knocked out here in the fifth. Everyone will say was it the three days rest. That's so overstated. It's not the three days rest today. It's if you pitch with three days rest how you recover in the next start. So I don't think you can blame it on that. Jimmy Key. The left hander making his first appearance Harold Baines trying to bunt fouls it off for strike one. Jimmy Key who as we said five and oh in the final month of the season struggled during it but was strong at the finish at a 13 and 13 record this year and second to Jack Morris on the club in innings pitched. 
and uh, eased out of the rotation because of David Cohn. Ironically, now relieving Cohn with the A's leading six to one, and that was the score yesterday that they had going into the eighth inning when Toronto staged their rally. Harold Baines is 0 for 2 on the day. The runner at first is Ruben Sierra with a homer and a single and three RBIs. Now seven runs driven in in the series. Baines looking to sacrifice Sierra in the scoring position takes the ball two and one. That three days rest will come up because of Morris's performance yesterday and now Cone today. But for years. Every fourth day was the norm and then in postseason play recall Sandy Koufax would pitch complete games with two days rest. This guy was a hard thrower. There's the bunt by Baines. It's a good one. Gruber has one play and it's over to Olerud for the sacrifice as Sierra moves into scoring position. Seven interesting you saw a glimpse of Jack Morris in the dugout Morris who has been not effective in his two starts thus far particularly yesterday would get the call in game seven which would make some interesting scenarios going in. Here's Mark McGuire 0 for 1 with a walk. And they're going to pass McGuire and put him on with first base open and pitch to Steinbach. Pretty interesting with the versatility the Oakland lineup yesterday Mark McGuire today the cleanup here Harold Baines both. Execute a sacrifice but there's Jack Morris. I think Oakland would going in felt pretty comfortable. If we can beat Morris twice, our chances of winning are excellent. They beat him once, knocked him out once, and they're down 3-1. If the A's win, the game six pitchers would be Juan Guzman and Mike Moore. And the A's would be faced with looking at Guzman and Morris back to back those two pitchers pitched back to back three times during the season they never lost back to back so that's a rather difficult task and that's why you focus in on just today's game look at Wednesday when it gets here and it will get here so Jimmy Key now facing Terry Steinbach with one out A's runners are at first and second three runs are in it is a six to one ball game. David Cohn pitching with three days rest and does not last the fifth inning. So a big lead for Dave Stewart when he comes out in the top of the sixth. No and two now to Steinbach. Not the Terry Steinbach that we saw the last couple weeks of the season and even in the rest of this game if for the A's were to go on and win I think Tony La Russa would like to see as well as Terry Steinbach would like to see a couple of good at bats going into game six he is not swinging the bat right now like he's capable of doing he's been fine behind the plate oh yeah he's pulling off a lot of pitches that are on the outside part he never did that during the year and there goes the runner from second to throw to third and they've got him Ruben Sierra is thrown out trying to steal third for the second out of the inning. Tony La Russa likes to try to steal third. See Sierra's jump in the background and Borders gets a pretty good pitch to throw low and in and makes a nice accurate throw to Gruber. And Sierra just slides in and tags himself up. So McGuire is the lone base runner on at first and the one two pitch two and two now to Steinbach. Blue Jays with an error in the third inning allowing an unearned run to score for the A's have committed two miscues here in the fifth inning. Ground ball to Lee he'll get the force at second Alomar two of the three runs this inning by the A's unearned but they lead it six to one and will return to Oakland Coliseum after this word from your local station. Picturesque Northern California the scene of the middle three games of this American League series. A's lead six to one and uh, we can spot those mountains on this view through neighboring East Bay all the way to the Oakland Coliseum. On a clear day you can see mm -hmm. the Coliseum. <laughs> 
Six to one, the A's lead. And Joe Carter, Dave Winfield, and John Olerud against Dave Stewart here in the sixth inning. And a half swing roller to the first baseman McGuire. He'll make the play unassisted, and there's one away. Here's Dave Winfield, who homered his last time up. Here's the sequence of pitches from Dave Stewart that led up to that 3 1 home run. A fastball inside, another one. The third one caught the corner. The fourth one, Stewart thought was a strike. Our graph there shows it outside the zone. Here comes the 3 1 fastball. And like most good power hitters, 3 1 count, they'll hunt that fastball, and when they get it, they don't often miss it. This guy hasn't missed many all year. Mm. First 40 year old to drive in 100 plus runs in baseball history. Facing Dave Winfield, facing Dave Stewart. Be interesting to see if he busts him off the plate again with that five run lead. First pitch is strike one. Stewart's comments that he made coming into this game that I guarantee I'll do my job looks better and better. He's backing it up so far today. He has allowed one run on four hits. And the one run coming off of Winfield's bat. And he smacks a base hit past Brown in the left field. And you get the feeling from game one and this game five that Dave Winfield can hit Dave Stewart. That's not a good matchup for the A's. Feels rather comfortable against him. Jerry Brown with a nice dive just out of reach. And I think Dave Stewart's mindset today, unlike the regular season when it was if I hold the lead through seven, everything's okay. They've seen what's happened the last couple days. Stu today might just say, I better try to close this baby out myself. The bullpen picture is not a pretty one for Tony LaRusse's crew. John Olerud has struck out twice. Last time a call third strike. And there's 0-1 to Olerud. Tony said he was going to talk to Dennis Eckersley, who you know, as Leslie Visser said earlier, wants to come out and redeem himself so badly today but he threw what 60 pitches or so in the last two games. Oh and two now to Olerud. Nothing a short reliever wants more than having a bad day and getting right back in the game and in the next and managers today are are usually very very thoughtful very aware of that and they will get them in a safe situation as quickly as possible. Olerud swings and misses. And he strikes out for the third time. Well, we haven't heard Roger Clemens scouting report on Candy Maldonado, and let's hear it now. In order to get Candy Maldonado out, you want to stair step him with fastballs. And by that, I mean throw him a belt high fastball, and if he swings and misses that one, then try and entice him to swing at one a little bit higher. Uh, this is the guy that has to beat you because you don't want to let Carter and Winfield beat you before him. Well, make him beat you, and he's done it a couple times in this series. Gives you an idea that they think Maldonado is a low ball hitter. We talked yesterday Mark, about Mark McGuire and that vertical bat. Most guys hold the bat straight up and down, like the ball low. And that's what Candy's doing. One and one to Maldonado. And with hitters like that, when, oh, you, say, Sorry. when you say stair step them, as Roger says, why, if you get a fastball in, say, about the thighs, then you get one up above the belt, and then you try to get him to chase a high one. Stewart this inning has thrown eight pitches all of them have been strikes. High fly ball shallow left field Henderson coming on in. There was a hit in one left. In the middle of the sixth inning Stewart sails along six to one eight. Back in the Oakland Coliseum where the A's lead the Jays 6 to 1. I'm with Bill LaJoy, a scout for the Atlanta Braves. Bill, you've been charting every pitch. Where did it get I away? Oh, well, we'll get back to him. Where did it get away from David Cohn and what has Dave Stewart been doing well? Well, Dave is uh, starting to really hit with his fastball and split finger and, and uh, Cohn had he was just wild today. He just couldn't find the strike zone. Should you get to the World Series, who would the Braves better match up with? Well, the uh, I think we would match up better with uh, the Toronto Ball Club. Well, it's hard to match up with Roberto Alomar. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Back to you, Dick. All right. Thank you very much, Leslie. Wilson bounces out to shortstop, and there's one gone here in the sixth inning. Boy, surprising to hear him say match up better with the Toronto Ball Club. Pitchers against hitters. I mean, up and down the lineup. I, I look at Toronto's lineup as more 
has more depth than Oakland. But that's what those guys get paid for with those charts. And they look at their pitching staff and their hitters. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, if they think they match up better with Toronto, that speaks very highly of the Atlanta talent. Mm -hmm. One and one to Bordick, who's 0 for 2 today. But he has made sparkling defensive plays in each of the last two games. He robbed Roberto Alomar of a base hit in the fifth inning with a great play at shortstop, and Alomar throws out Bordick here for out number two. Alomar has been outstanding in the field for the Blue Jays, but as a team, they have been slightly less than brilliant. They have tied a league championship series record with eight errors already and all eight have come in the last three games here in Oakland. Don't like to make excuses for big league players but the. The fifth inning and came around and scored a run. Last inning when the A's scored three runs. One and two now to Blankenship hitting ninth for the A's. Little different twist. You've seen the hard throwing right handers like Cone, Guzman, Morris. And all of a sudden, here comes the crafty lefty with that ball breaking down and away. A little change of speeds, herky jerky motion. Curve ball and Blankenship goes down on strikes. So Jimmy Key has pitched well since he's come in. That's his first strikeout, and we move to the seventh here in Oakland. Totals after six innings. The A's six runs, six hits, no errors. The Blue Jays one run, five hits, and three errors. As the A's leading by five runs. Similar scenario to yesterday, but Dave Stewart pitching solid baseball, looking to even or at least bring the A's to within a game and send it to Toronto for game six. Kelly Gruber leading off. And the count to Gruber is two balls and no strikes. Three and zero oh now. Big game for Dave Stewart, who of course has been part of the Oakland A's success, 20 victories or more from '87 through 1990, part of their big success under Tony Larusa. Trying to extend this series. Gets that pitch over three and one. And if he does, the A's will have another veteran, Mike Moore, who would work in game number six in Toronto on Wednesday night. But Gruber leads off with a walk to start the seventh inning. And the beautiful pictures we've seen, that's the Coliseum where the Golden State Warriors play their games and are going through training camp the but one airship giving us great pictures nice job guys throughout these three games borders trying to bunt his way on and he fouls it back not a bad idea you're down five element of surprise borders known as more of a power hitter so he has Jerry Brown playing back far enough good heads up try I think what you referred to with Dave Stewart is what's going through the hearts and minds of Stewart and Lansford. They, they don't want to give this Oakland era up easily because this will be the last time they'll all be together. They're going to sign, you know, obviously some of those free agents. They're not going to lose half the team, although they could, but they'll keep some people. But the, the identity of this ball club, which has been such an exciting identity in baseball for so many years, is at an end no matter what happens here and the last thing that the A's and Tony La Russa wanted to do I know coming in here was to lose this thing at home and go out that way. One ball and two strikes the count to Pat Borders there are the free agents and. Let's see let's look at some McGuire good chance to be back darling possibly. And then you go to the right hand column and look at Steinbach and I got to. Uh, well, Stu, but question marks behind all the rest of them. Line drive foul. What about Jeff Russell? No, I, I don't know. I think Jeff Russell wants to be a closer somewhere, and they have not used him a great deal. He'd be on call today, but I don't know that. You know, cash is king, right? I mean, you don't make as much money as a setup man as you do as a closer. So even though Jeff Russell likes the 
atmosphere here. I don't know that he wants to set up Eckersley opposed to going to another team and being the top guy. One two pitch and a line drive base hit to right field. Kelly Gruber doesn't stop going heading for third. Here's the throw not in time. Pat Borders with a base hit and now the Blue Jays staging a no out rally in the seventh inning runners are at first and third. Six to one is the score. And speaking of that bullpen with. That hit right there is a pretty good chance we'll see it get active as Dave Duncan makes his way to the mound. There is Jeff Russell. We know that Rick Honeycutt is a possibility to see some action today. As we mentioned earlier, as Dave Duncan goes to the mound, Tony doesn't want to use Eckersley. Of course, we don't know what happened in the discussion that they had, which was prior to the game. Jim Corsi could be used. One pitcher we probably will not see is Kelly Downs today. Give him the day off, and the question mark with Eckersley is as like a lot of short relievers, they have a routine every day. They come to the ballpark, they go to the outfield, play catch, go through their pregame deal. And in Eckersley's case, because he has been stretched out a little bit, he will come in to Tony Larusa. And as Tony says, I will make him put his hand on the Bible and tell me I'm okay. And and you know he wants to get back out there, but they also have to look at a seven game series. I think it would take a real emergency for Eckersley to get in there today. Manuel Lee, who has bounced out twice. Runners at first and third, nobody out. Six to one the score. The A's lead here in the seventh. Foul for a strike. Normally you see a Dave Stewart go into the seventh inning with a five run lead you say well it's in pretty good hands but the way the A's relief Corps has handled things the last few days it may not be enough one and one the count to lead Mike Bordick at shortstop checking with Blankenship at second. See who's going to cover on a double play ball. Bowed at the plate. You see no throws going to first base by Stewart. Earlier in the game talked about some pitchers pitch like there is no one on base. And this is one of those situations if you're Dave Stewart. Runners at the corners, nobody out. But with a five-run lead, just pitch as if they're empty and try to get the hitter. That'll preserve the lead. You pay attention to the runners, you get in deeper trouble. And why? While Manuel Lee is such an important batter here, even though he's 0 for 2, consider that White and Alomar, two men who have done well off of Dave Stewart, are coming up next. So Stewart, in all reality, has to dispose of Manuel Lee and has a ground ball foul down the right field line. White with two hits and Alomar with one hit and robbed of a second would be the next two hitters for the Blue Jays. Six to one. The A's with two runs in the first, one in the third, and three in the fifth. That's Gruber. And Borders with the lead at first. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And the fastball gets Lee. And that's a big first out. Strikeout number four. All the great ones usually have that ability to make the big pitches to get out of jams to avoid the big inning. And that's been a trait of Dave Stewart for the last five years here in Oakland and winning, helping this team win championships. One out. And Devon White with a single and a double. He ripped one into the right field corner his last time up. Dave Stewart has had difficulty, particularly against Devon White and Dave Winfield in this series. First and third and one out and the first pitch misses. Outfield shades white around on the left. Two balls and no strikes and that's the way they're pitching. It. Dave Stewart has now thrown 116 pitches here into the seventh inning. White getting a good pitch to hit fouls it off so Stewart got a break there two and one Tony La Russa will not be as concerned with that pitch count in this game because 
if the A's come back and win Stewart wouldn't have to start again till maybe Sunday and if they lose it's his last start they're not going to wear him out but he's not going to be as cautious as he would say in the middle of July. Line drive base hit up the middle so Devon White has three hits Gruber will score moving to second is Borders and it's a six to two ball game. So there's plenty of uneasiness here in the Coliseum. Yesterday the A's had a 6 1 lead going into the eighth inning when the Blue Jays scored three times and tied it with two in the ninth. So this game still much in the balance and you can tell from the Blue Jays dugout that they believe they can come back. Never before has this team been known as a comeback team. They're changing that reputation in a hurry. Here is Roberto Alomar. How dangerous has he been throughout the series against any pitcher. Toronto is now out hit Oakland seven to six. Three of those hits coming off the bat of Devon White. Who knocked in his first run of the series with that base hit. One and one to Roberto. One out runners on first and second. Joe Carter on deck. Six to two in favor of the A's. Oh, one ball and two strikes and Alomar can't believe that was called for a strike. Banks are open. I mean his borderline pitches have been going for balls and Stewart and the A's get a big break there. Brinkman looking over the inside corner gave up on that fourth ball. Call it a strike. Rob yelling stew. And there's a line drive right at second baseman. Blanket chip. They get the double play to Bordick, and that'll do it. As Pat Borders was running on the pitch, and Alomar hit it sharply and hits into a double play to end the seventh inning. The Blue Jays get a run, and in the middle of the seventh, the A's are in front six to two. Close call for Stu. Six to two, the A's in front, bottom of the seventh inning. Jimmy Key facing Ricky Henderson. First pitch in there for a strike. Henderson has reached base twice today. He walked, scored a run, and was safe on a bunt single. Third ball, and the count 0 and 2 now to Henderson. Dennis Eckersley between innings. Made his walk out to the bullpen as he does in the seventh inning of game. So there's Eck in case they need him. 9 1 1. <laughs> Said only an emergency. Missing outside, 1 and 2. Yesterday, the first time that Eckersley was removed for, from a game since May of 1991. Five hits he gave up with the most hits he's given up in any one stint this year. You know what's amazing about all the hullabaloo about Eckersley losing a game is can you imagine a guy just losing one game creating that much attention? That's how perfect, if you yeah. want to use that phrase, that he was all year. The standard, he's a goes uh, oh. And Cito Gaston coming out of the dugout, Gene Tennis, the bench coach with him, arguing with first base umpire Drew Coble. And he's looking at Brinkman. He said, ask for help. It has not been a popular day for umpires. Their appeal is that, okay, Joe Brinkman, that's the home plate umpire. You didn't see the swing. How about appealing to Coble? Because the Blue Jays thought that Ricky went around on that ball. I think what's probably happened the entire game is there's been a lot of jawing going on from the benches from both benches and so before it gets out of hand as you see Ricky yeah, borderline and you see Ricky almost go around and what Coble did was throw out Gene Tennis the coach to quiet things down and yet not throw out anybody on the roster three and two now to Henderson. center field in his last 13 at bats Ricky Henderson has six hits and two walks 
So he is really getting it going after a slow start in this series, and he's aboard to start inning number seven. Give you an idea how hard that ball was hit. I think Manny Lee felt he should catch this ball. And it look at the top spin on it. Lee takes one step. Now right there, his glove is there, and then it dives away from him. That was one of those top spin sinking liners and just darted away from Lee. Henderson hmm. coming into the dugout and we're going to have a pinch runner. And that's not a bad move. Eric Fox is going to run for Ricky Henderson who leaves the game after going two for three. So the veteran why not save his legs if the A's hold on to this lead would need him. To be as fresh as possible for game six Wednesday night in Toronto. Big day for Ricky. Go in, ice those wheels down. Get about 36 hours rest. So Eric Fox, the base runner. He was the one thrown out at home plate in the ninth inning on the fielder's choice with the score tied yesterday. And Jerry Brown takes a breaking ball. He's looking to bunt. He was the best in the league at that this year with Brown, and he has had a fantastic game. Three for three. Three singles and two big RBIs. You got three options here with the speed at first and Brown in the batter's box. Steal, hit, and run, or bunt. You could pick any one of them to get Fox to second. There's the bunt, goes foul. And again, the importance here with the 6 2 score is to get that fifth run, eliminate the grand slam home run, tying the game. I heard you say those same words yesterday. Pardon? I heard a lot of managers say those <laughs> words over the years. Let's get that extra. I used to scratch my head and say, what do you mean? It's 6-2. Isn't this league good enough? <laughs> no, we want that fifth run. What if somebody hits a granny? Then it's tied. Well, yesterday the Blue Jays didn't get the granny, but they got enough runs to tie it. One and one the count to Jerry Brown. Three of the A's six runs have been unearned today because of three errors by the Blue Jays who tied an LCS record with eight miscues so far they were in the fifth game so they've got a chance to break a record they would like to hold one ball and one strike nobody out Eric Fox the pinch runner is on fastball is in there for a strike it's one and two now to Brown. Jerry Brown took the pitch and I think uh, first of all he thinks it's outside as he takes a peek at it Brinkman rings him up the strike and the other thing he thought Fox might have been stealing on that pitch. Round ball into the hole and through in the left field. Base hit for Jerry Brown he's four for four today. Fox stops at second base. What a game for Jerry Brown is filling in for Lansford at third this afternoon. And a great acquisition for Oakland again and one of those bargain players that Texas did not want he's been in the Cleveland organization and has found a home here great factor in why the A's won the West and how effective have the top three hitters been for the A's today Henderson Brown and Sierra they have accounted for all eight hits against Toronto pitching Sierra with a two run homer and an RBI single. Brown on it first four for four and Ricky Henderson who's now out of the game had two hits including a bunt single. First pitch is in for a strike to Sierra and this is Sierra's strong side the right side. Two on and nobody out. It's six to two in favor of the A's. And Sierra wanted to hit one over the scoreboard with that swing. You see the big swing right here, the high leg kick, and Jimmy Key with an off speed pitch. Doug Rader and the Oakland A's, Tony La Russa trying to get Sierra to just tone it down, not try to overswing. Mark Icorn is in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Jimmy Key ahead on the count to Sierra. One ball and two strikes. There's Icorn. 
who was acquired from the California Angels for catcher Greg Myers during the season. Big swing and a pop-up in the middle of the diamond. Key points to Borders, who makes the catch for the first out. Jimmy Key's got one more man to get for Cito Gaston. If he can keep it a 6-2 game and get Baines out, then you you mentioned Icorn right. obtained from the Angels for the purpose of getting out some right-hand hitters, and he'd be the pitcher coming in to face McGuire. Box on at second base. He ran for Henderson, who singled. And Jerry Brown on it first with the single. Four for four for Jerry Brown. Here's Harold Bain, sacrificed his last time up. He's 0 for 2 officially on the day. Goes after the breaking pitch and gets a piece of it. 0 and 1 the count. Outside the strike zone, one and one. Goes to the opposite field. Maldonado going back on the track, nearly slipped, makes the catch, tagging up his box. He'll go to third, sliding in, holding it first is Brown. There are two down and runners now at first and third for Oakland. Baines very nearly had a shot off the wall in left field. Well, he is good a hitter in the major leagues at driving the ball to the opposite field. Gets a lot of home runs out that direction. Almost got one there. Cito Gaston is out to the mound as you see the diving slide by Fox. He has Mark Eichhorn ready with right handed hitters McGuire and Steinbach. McGuire coming to the plate now. Cito has not made a move yet. I mean, talk about players' manager. That's one thing Cito does that is unlike a lot of other managers. By the time most MGRs cross the line, they'll make the signal. But he'll go out and talk with the pitcher, discuss the situation with him, as he did with Dwayne Ward yesterday. Who would you like to face? Cito also would go from there. Also has an opportunity yeah. to beat to another umpire, Don Dinkinger, the crew chief, who's working second base today. So Key will stay in the game. There's Dave Stewart, who has pitched seven innings and allowed only two runs. The team has a four run lead now, six to two. And Mark McGuire. Surprising move here, leaving Key in to face McGuire. Why would you leave a left-hand pitcher in to face a right-hand hitter? Because like a lot of right-hand power hitters, if you can turn that ball over as a lefty with not too much on it, sometimes righty was re would rather hit the hard throwers. Fox with the lead at third. Brown on at first base. Two down. We're in the seventh inning. That's low for a ball. Mark McGuire hit a two-run homer in his first at-bat in the series in Toronto and since then he is one for 15. Again low two and oh. Two years ago he also struggled at the plate. Hitting as you like to say Jim a buck 85 with two runs batted in the average this year deceptive because I know it's down there 125 but he's had a lot of good at bats. 3 and 0. Oh. And you say, okay, big deal. He had good at bats. He didn't get hits, but power hitters like that can miss the ball on the barrel for just an inch or two. Is the difference between a home run and a long fly? Very easily, Mark McGuire could have five home runs in this series. Ball four. McGuire walks for the third time. One of them was an intentional pass, and that'll load the bases. Second walk issued by Key. So Fox is at third base. Jerry Brown now moves to second and McGuire on at first with two out. 
And an opportunity for Terry Steinbach here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And again, allowing the left hander Key to stay in. I think an example of Cito Gaston saying, here's a veteran, a guy who started, who has faced both lefties and righties. Got enough confidence to use him. Steinbach swings at the first pitch and a foul pop. John Oleru makes the catch. He had Carter and Alamore around him, so Steinbach pops out with the bases loaded. And we go to the eighth inning here at the Oakland Coliseum, 6 to 2 to score. Well, one of the batting heroes for the A's, Jerry Brown, filling in for Carney Lansford at third base. Four for four with two RBIs. Dave Stewart comes out for the eighth inning, has allowed only two earned runs. And David Cohn was knocked out in the fifth inning. Did not have it today for the Blue Jays, who came in with a three to one lead in games. Eric Fox replaces Ricky Henderson in left field. And Joe Carter stands in against. Dave Stewart. Carter is 0 for 2, walked his first time up, and a fastball let her high. 0 and 1 the count. Attendance today is 44,955, and that's almost 4,000 fans under capacity. Breaking ball, a foul at the plate, two strikes. After failing again. The last inning with a couple of base runners on and a chance to add to it. I think this is the most uncomfortable. Four run lead that Tony LaRusso's had all year. Check swing, they appeal to Drew Coble. It's a ball, one and two. Dave Stewart can give the A's nine innings. He has thrown 121 pitches coming into this inning. What a boost that would be for the bullpen of the Oakland A's that needs a rest badly. And that's Almost to a man and a good catch by that young fella out there who someday hopes to uh, maybe be warming up in that very bullpen for the age. Some have started that way working as clubhouse attendants bat boys. Two balls and two strikes to Carter one of my old roommates Jim Merritt left hand pitcher 20 game winner for the Reds in the 70s was the clubhouse attendant for Jim Muey in Dodger Stadium when Spahn and Burdett were in their prime. That's where he learned a lot about pitching. You can learn a lot hanging around the clubhouse when you're a youngster like that. Certainly can. Stewart was ahead of Carter two strikes and now here's the three two to him. Strikes him out. That is the fifth strikeout of the game for Dave Stewart, and there's one gone here in the eighth inning. Crowd chanting Stu, Stu, and he's delivering for the fans. Appears to have a pretty good fork ball today. And it looked like it might be it right there. Even on a 3 2, three two pitch with a comfortable lead, he gets Carter to chase it out of the zone. Dave Winfield. White and Winfield have really hit Stewart hard in this series. Winfield with his second home run of the LCS in the fourth inning, leading off and a single in the sixth. He also walked, so he hasn't been retired yet by Stu. And he pops up the first pitch. Steinbach. And they finally get Winfield. Right now, let's check in with Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, I'm here with an old friend of yours and a friend of Tony LaRusso's Golden State Warrior coach Don Nelson. Don, what brings you here? Well, I'm a big A's fan. I love baseball, and I come to a lot of their games. You've been involved in a 3-1 to one comeback with the Celtics against Philadelphia. What does it take? Well, I'll tell you what. It takes a little bit of luck because you're always playing a great team, but it can be done, and if anybody can do it, the A's can do it. What about in your sport? The Pacific Division has a new old face. Are you glad about the return of Magic Johnson? I'm glad to, to see Magic back. I really am. But Barkley, on the other hand, we wish he would have stayed in the East. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, Don. Back to you, Dick. <laughs> All right. Don Nelson, one of the top coaches in the NBA. John Olerud fouls out, flies out to Eric Fox. And a 1-2-3 inning for Stu. Is he ever doing the job today for the A's? Mark Icorn is the third pitcher of the day for the Blue Jays who trail the A's six to two as Oakland comes up in the eighth inning. 
Icorn was acquired from the Angels on July 30th in exchange for catcher Greg Myers and outfielder Rob Ducey and he began his pro career with the Blue Jays organization in 1979 and thrilled to be back home and a part of a winning team again Boy, this guy was some part of the bullpen for the Blue Jays five or six years ago Willie Wilson will lead off against him Wilson 0 for 3 today and all of the offense by the A's have come from the first three hitters in their lineup. First pitch and a fly ball to center field where Devon White shades his eyes and that's one out. Great pictures once more from uh, well I wouldn't mind being up there with that Bud one airship today Jim. We're almost up that high. Nice. Do you hear that crowd was disappointing but again I think that points up how the Bay Area fans have been so spoiled by the success of this team that they are anticipating the World Series before they fill up the Coliseum. Mike Borden would like to play in one first pitch taken for a strike. Blue Jays coming in with a chance to wrap it up today. They may have to wait another couple of days to get another chance. But. You don't want to give the A's too many opportunities. You want to put down a team when you can put them down and not give them a new life. And the Oakland A's may have gotten new life today. We'll see. Yeah, that old let's wait and win it at home. You could forget about that. The fans might say that, but the players never do. Foul ball down the left field line. And looking ahead to the game six matchup, if the A's go on and hold their six to two lead. It would be Juan Guzman against Mike Moore. Moore has had success at Sky Dome. He pitched the second game of this series. Guzman went in game number three and went six innings. Fly ball to center field. Once again, Devon White. Moore pitched seven innings in the Toronto three to one victory in game two history if he does and as you mentioned Glavin pitching much better lately there was some concern about him latter part of the season Lance Blankenship with two down takes a call strike how'd you like to hit off that as a right hand hitter that motion we just saw from Mark Eichhorn the ball's coming out of about the shortstop position you know since the LCS has gone from five to seven game series no league championship playoff has ended in six games. ALCS. Hmm. One and two. A lot of fives, a lot of sevens. Of course, until 1985, it was the best of five three out of five and it was the Blue Jays and the Royals 1985 that started the best of seven game series just missed Mike Horn wanted that pitch it's an umpire's balk Joe Brinkman <laughs> started up with the army got halfway and he stopped <laughs> shoulder shrug two balls and two strikes, two outs here in the A's eighth inning. Bob Welsh, who pitched so well yesterday, giving the A's seven plus innings. And would have been the story of the game had it not been for the Blue Jays' tremendous rally. Drive to right field. Joe Carter is there, and a one-two-three inning for Mark Icorn. We go to the ninth inning. The A's three outs away from their second win of the series. Blue Jays batting in the top of the ninth inning, trailing the A's six to two. Victory by the A's would extend the series to at least six games Wednesday night. In Toronto, where Juan Guzman would oppose Mike Moore, but Candy Maldonado will lead off. He's 0 for 3 against Dave Stewart. First pitch 
Taken for ball one. It's been a while since Oakland fans have been able to holler that stew call in the ninth inning. Looking for the complete game. And a pop up. It's a shallow right field. Lance Blankenship will give way to Ruben Sierra. And there's one out in the ninth inning. One out in the ninth inning. And Kelly Gruber. Who has walked in three trips. And Dave Stewart has... He guaranteed. He said, I'll do my job. You mentioned that at the outset, Jim. And he has... In a big way. Pretty good at closing the deal also, which hasn't been done for a while. It's popped up and there's a play for Jerry Brown, third base. What a game he's had with four hits, giving Carney Lansford a rest. And there are two down. The coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on CBS is Rick LaCivita. Today's telecast was produced by Bob Dekas and directed by Bob Fishman. And the senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gordon. And the Blue Jays are down to their last out. Half Borders, who has one hit today, fouls it out of play. What do you think of Guzman and Moore? It appears that people may think Toronto has the edge in the matchup, but Moore has pitched well at Skydome. Still think Toronto has the edge. Mike Moore has pitched well, but Juan Guzman on a sharp night is as tough a pitcher to hit as there is in the American League. And now the Jays are down to their last strike. Tony La Russa did not want the season to end today at home with this group. And the A's are one strike away from extending the season to Wednesday night in Toronto, and who knows? Border stays alive. Zito Gaston's Blue Jays have really not played a bad game in this series. Now today, they have committed three errors, and three of the six runs have been unearned by the A's. Ground ball hit to blanket chip. This should do it. The ball game is over. And the A's win at home and extend the series as Dave Stewart goes the distance. The final score is 6-2. to two. And the Oakland players come out of their dugout to congratulate Dave Stewart, the 35-year-old veteran. And now the Blue Jays' lead is 3-2 to two in this ALCS. We'll be back in just a moment. Series is now 3-2 to two, Toronto, and the Chevrolet player of the game is Dave Stewart, who went all the way for the victory. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the Special Olympics, and he's standing by with Leslie Visser right now. Leslie? Dick, I'm with the man who could run for the mayor of Oakland. Congratulations, Dave Stewart. You said you're going to come out and do your job today. What was the key? Just throwing strikes, you know, being aggressive and, you know, staying in the strike zone. You know, we, the guys got out early and gave me a, a little bit of cushion. And it made me relax a, a lot more than I was at the first, uh, at the outset of the game. And it was just, the guys helped me out, and I just tried to do the best that I could. Well, congratulations. You didn't let it end here. Back to you, Dick. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. The last pitcher to pitch a complete game in the ALCS was Bruce Hurst back in 86 and win.